My friends, are you ready to talk about the silent switcher? Yes, I know, yet another electronic engineering component that should be a character in a superhero universe. But instead of fighting crime, quietly, of course, this silent switcher is a perfect addition to micromodule regulators to help minimize EMI, save PCB layout design time, and improve your low frequency noise performance. And no capes or special costumes needed. So that's a plus. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Eunice Salami from Analog Devices and I explore the benefits of Analog Devices' silent switcher technology. We also examine the pros and cons of switch mode power supplies and how you can utilize silent switcher micromodule regulators in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Analog Devices. Hi, Eunice. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're investigating silent switcher technology in micromodule regulators today. So before we dig into the details, what kind of applications would this be a good fit for? And what are the biggest benefits of this technology? Absolutely. DC-DC regulators in general and micromodules specifically play an important role in powering up the subsystems in modern electronics technologies. Some of these subsystems in communication, imaging, test, and measurement applications are highly noise sensitive and they are required to be compliant with the electromagnetic interference standards. Our micromodule power products with the silent switcher technology provide efficient, reliable, and small size solution for these applications. The key benefits of our solutions are minimizing the risk of EMI interference. These parts are compliant with EMI standards like CISPR 22 and 25, with no need for additional EMI filters to fulfill these requirements. The high efficiency with a wide operating switching frequency is another key benefit of the silent switchers. They provide multiple outputs that can be either used in parallel for higher currents or to power up various parts of the subsystem with different voltages. Time spent on the layout for the DC-DC regulator is saved by using micromodules as well. Okay, so let's step back a bit and talk about switch mode power supplies. What do you think are the biggest pros and cons when it comes to these kind of power supplies? Electronic devices mainly use switch mode power supplies as a voltage supplies in contrast to the linear power supplies. This is because the DC-DC power supplies provide voltage and power required by different electronic devices with higher efficiency and high power density with fast transient response. They are small and cost effective. The main concern about these uh, switch mode regulators is noise or electromagnetic interference due to the switching nature of these type of regulators. A synchronous bug converter, which is a step-down converter, is shown in the bottom left picture on this slide. By turning on and off the top and bottom switches, the voltage between two switches, which is called switch node voltage, changes between zero and the input voltage. Also, the input current of the converter is flipping between the output current and the zero amp during the switching intervals. So we can see the harmonic content of these two waveforms on the picture. These harmonics can lead to EMI in form of radiated or conducted emissions. Our silent switcher, micromodule regulators, alleviate the EMI concerns associated with the switch mode regulators. On the right side, we can see discrete micromodule buck converter with quad 3 amp outputs. The micromodule solution is much smaller and compact compared to the discrete solution. The micromodule includes the controller IC, power MOSFET switches, inductors, and other supporting components. And we only need a few supporting components outside of the micromodule. 
when it comes to the micromodule, I must emphasize that it's not all about the smaller solution, but also better performance, both electrically and thermally, with high reliability and better EMI compatibility. So what's the cause of this noise? The voltage on the switch node changes between zero and input voltage. It is a synchronous bar converter. And this voltage changes with high dV over dt. And the current in the hot loop, shown uh, in dash red line, changes rapidly too. The high dI dt on this loop, combined with the parasitic RLCs of the hot loop, will lead to an oscillation on the switch node voltage and hence radiated or conducted emission. The difference between the two switch node waveforms in black and blue on this slide is less than a nano Henry parasitic inductance on the drain of the top of MOSFET and the source of the bottom switch. To avoid this uh, high frequency ringing on the switch node and the parasitic elements is to make sure that this hot loop is small. So by doing that, we, we are avoiding the ringing on the switch nodes. So what are the options to solve this issue? So one way is uh, by adding input and output LC filters to suppress the harmonics. The other solution is to add an EMI shield to mitigate the radiated emission. Both solutions makes the converter size larger, adds cost, and have a negative effect on the efficiency. RC snubbers connected to the switch node is Another solution shown on the right side picture to slow down the switch node voltage and reduce the high frequency ringing on the switch node. This will lead to higher switching loss, especially at higher switching frequency and hence lower efficiency of the converter. It increases the solution size and creates more heat as well. We can see here that there is a trade-off between the efficiency and EMI compliance for the conventional DC-DC converters. But the other approach is dealing with the cause of the problem, and our silent switcher technology deals with the causes rather than symptoms. It reduces the parasitic element, ESR and ESL, of the hot loop by replacing the bond wire with a copper pillar flip chip. These copper Philip has better thermal conductivity as well. Lower ESL will lead to a lower harmonics on the switch node voltage and hence lower EMI issues. Silent switching technology employ two small contradicting hot loops shown in the middle picture, which not only reduces the energy in the harmonics, but also confines the magnetic field to a certain area and hence avoiding radiation and interference with the surrounding electronic devices. Okay, so Jonas, what other effects should we keep in mind here? This slide summarizes the benefit of the silent switching technology. There on the right side, we see the switch node voltage for a DC-DC regulator with and without silent switcher technology. LT8614 with copper pillar flip chip, two small hot loops, and a confined magnetic field shows considerably lower ringing on the switch node. This leads to a lower radiated emission and a better EMI performance. Okay, so analog devices has had silent switcher technologies in their portfolio for quite a while, right? That's correct. Our first micromodule was released in April 2016. LTM8053 is a Bach regulator based on the silent switcher technology with input voltage range from 3.0 volt to 40 volt and the output voltage range from 0.97 volt to 15 volt. It delivers 3.5 amp continuous and 6 amp peak current and can be paralleled for higher output current. The switching frequency is up to 3 megahertz. We can see the components uh, inside the micromodule on the top right picture highlighting the two hot loops. The, the, the micromodule includes the IEC inductors and all supporting components inside the package with height of 3.3, millimeters. So let's talk a bit more about the benefits of silent switcher micromodule regulators. Absolutely. So traditionally in applications with high nose sensitivity, a DC-DC regulator with post LC filter and LDO is used. 
This slide shows a power three for AD9625 with a 12-bit 2.5 gigahertz second ADC, a demo board with with and without a silent switcher DC-DC converter. With a silent switcher micromodule regulator like LTM AD65 in this case, there is no need for LDO and post LC filter. The efficiency of this solution is about 78% for silent switcher micromodule compared to the 48% efficiency with the LDO solutions. Okay, so Jonas, you said that these solutions can decrease our power supply areas as well, right? Yes, it is. Uh, by using the silent suture micromodule regulator, as shown in this slide, the power supply area is 75% smaller and the solution is 30% more efficient. Great. Now, what kind of options do we have with the silent switcher micromodule regulator with a single output? So we can see our single output silent switcher and input voltage of up to 40 volt and the output voltage ranges from 0.8 volt to 15 volt. Uh, the, the continuous current goes from 1.2 amps to 3.5 amps and the switching frequency varies from 2 kilohertz to 3 megahertz with a small size and low profile BGA packages. Okay, so what about multiple outputs? What kind of options do we have in this case? Our multiple output silent switchers with up to 40 volt input voltage can provide quad 3 amp continuous current or 12 amp if we parallel the four outputs. We then output voltage range from 0.8 volt to 10 volts. These micromodules with compact packages and multiple outputs can be either used to supply different output voltages or the output can be parallel to supply higher output current. So can we take a closer look at the LTM8051? Yes, of course. The LTM8051 is a four complete step-down silent switcher in one package. As shown in the middle picture, these four outputs can be used to deliver 1.2 amps to various subsystems with different voltage requirements or can be parallel to provide 4.8 amps. It is compliant with CISPR 22 and 25 radiated emission standards as well. So what about the LTM 8060 you mentioned? So this micromodule is a quad 3 amp step down converter with a 4 amp peak current. It is also compliant with CISPR 22 and 25 EMI standards. And it can be used in multiple multi-phase operation mode to provide 12 amp or even can be synchronized and paralleled with the other LTM 8060s to provide high output currents. So where is silent switcher technology headed from here? The latest silent switcher technology combines the above mentioned features with an ultra noise current reference error amplifier to improve the low frequency noise, 10 Hz to 100 kHz of the micromodule regulators. As shown in the left image, the reference voltage of the error amplifier is set by an external resistor and the capacitor and a low noise 100 microamp current source. The larger capacitor on the reference pin filters the low frequency noise as well. Other than that, the feedback is directly connected to the output and there's no resistive divider on the feedback loop to gain up the low frequency noise on, on the reference to the output voltage. Okay, so can we also talk about the LTM4702 micromodule you talked about earlier? Yes, so the LTM4702 is a 8 amp step down micromodule based on the latest silent switcher technology with an input voltage range from 2.7 to 18 amps and an output voltage range from 0 to 6 volt. It is a ultra low EMI emission and ultra low low frequency noise micromodule with the package size of 3.25 by 6.25 millimeters and the height is about 5 millimeters. Okay, so what about the LTM 8080? Can we take a closer look at that one? 
So the LTM88 uh, is a dual 500 milliamps or can be a single one amp ultra low noise and ultra high PSRR septa micromodular regulator. It combines the low noise silence switcher technology with two LDOs with a magnetic shield between them to prevent the coupling or radiation from the switching side to the LDOs. The LDOs output voltage equal is about three microvolts compared to the two millivolt ripple on the output voltage of the switching regulator. These kind of low ripple output voltage is required in some applications like RF power supplies very low noise instrumentation or high speed, high precision data converters, as well as in some medical applications. So what kind of benefits does the LTM 8080 have over other solutions? As shown in this slide, the LTM 88 solution has a 71% lower output voltage ripple and 23% fewer components compared to the alternative solution, which is LTM8074 with two LDOs. It is 6% smaller and has the EMI shield between the switching sections and the linear regulator sections. We show the effect of the EMI barrier inside the LTM8080 as shown in the pictures. The barrier prevents magnetic field coupling from the switching to the LDOs based on the finite element method simulations. All right. So, Jonas, can you recap your main points for me? Yes. In summary, analog devices micromodule power products provide DC-DC solutions with high efficiency and low EMI. They have ultra-low, low-frequency noise with the ultra-fast transient response. The switching frequency is high and the package size is small with pinouts that simplifies the PCB layout. Excellent. Well, Jonas, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me here. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from analog devices. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE Journal.